Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Today I'll show you how to make your website fully responsive. With people accessing websites from an array of devices these days, it's more important than ever to make sure your website looks and functions as intended and is user-friendly at any size. By making sure your designs adjust automatically to different sizes, your website will be optimized for just about any viewport or screen size. While developers often achieve this by using HTML and CSS, never fear, with Elementor, you can optimize your whole website without writing a single line of code. We'll begin with the overview of responsive features, and then I'll show you how to use Elementor to design a responsive menu, change column width and wrapping, set up responsive font styles, hide and show elements on different devices, reverse the column order in a section, and use the responsive widget options. Let's start with a tour of the responsive features in Elementor. First is the responsive mode, which you can access here on the panel toolbar. Switch between desktop, tablet, and mobile previews by clicking the corresponding icon. Upon selecting a viewport, the page is previewed at that specific viewport's width. Also, you will notice upon entering the settings of any widget, column, or section that the editor automatically switches the viewport icon to match the selected view, just like we see here. Clicking the icon and switching between viewports will also switch the preview of your web page. Let's get to know the viewport a little better. It's important to understand that responsive edits in Elementor are generally inherited from the larger viewport down to the smaller viewport. So this means that changes to the desktop responsive settings are automatically applied downward to tablet, as well as mobile views. And changes to tablet are applied to mobile. Here on this heading widget, you can see that if we set the font size on desktop, the values on tablet and mobile appear empty. This is because they've been inherited from the larger viewport and will only change if we edit them manually, like this. Responsive edits are not inherited upwards, so mobile edits don't affect tablet or desktop. And tablet edits don't affect desktop. That said, there are times when Elementor intuitively anticipates a layout for smaller sizes and the columns or widgets width will change to fit the mobile viewport by default. There are even more responsive options for sections, columns, and widgets that you can access from the Advanced tab, which we'll cover soon. Now that we understand what a responsive website is and know how to navigate between Elementor's viewports, let's make our website responsive. I have my homepage here, designed in desktop mode, and it's time to see how it looks on tablet and mobile. Select the tablet icon to preview the website in the tablet viewport. As you can see, a lot of things appear different at this size. If you're using Elementor Pro, you can use Elementor to optimize your headers and footers. Don't have Pro? Don't worry, you can still follow along. The same principles of responsive design apply to all content and all the same responsive options are available in the free version for any content designed with Elementor. We'll begin with the header, move on down to the footer, and then come back to the page content. With Elementor's full site editing, we can quickly switch from the page content to the header, like this. The blue outline around the header tells us that it's now active. The first noticeable difference in tablet mode is this hamburger icon. By default, when you build your navigation menu, it's set to toggle on smaller viewports. Depending on your design, you can set the nav menu links to display on tablet, mobile, or not to display at all. In this design, we don't have so many links, so let's set the breakpoint to mobile. This way, the menu icon shows only when someone is viewing the website from mobile, and the menu links will still be visible on tablet. Now switch the preview to mobile. The menu icon is displayed just as we said it before, but the layout needs a little work. 
As mentioned in the overview, on smaller viewports, Elementor anticipates the column width and sets it to 100% on mobile. We'll discuss column width in more detail soon. Let's set the icons back to appear in the same row by entering the column settings. Set the width to 50% here. Do the same for the second column, so together they span one row. Perfect. Let's take a closer look at the nav menu and some of its settings. Click to expand it. Under Mobile dropdown, align the menu links to the center. In Style, under Toggle button, remove the background color by dragging the opacity all the way left. Great! Click Update to save changes to the header. Let's switch back to Tablet. Scroll down and click Edit Footer. Before we begin editing, let's get a better understanding of how columns work. When you have multiple columns in a section, their widths are by default equal. So for example, if you have two columns, each one will have a width of 50%. If you have four columns, each one will have a width of 25%, and so on. In this section, we have five columns of equal width. So each column, by default, takes up 20% of the section. They still fit in the viewport, but ideally, we want to allow a little more space between them, so that the columns won't be so close together. We can group the first three columns into one row, and the last two into the row below. To do this, set the column width of each of the first three rows to 33.33. .33. Whenever the total width of the column exceeds 100% of the section width, columns that no longer fit are displaced and pushed below into a new row. In this case, you can see that the last two columns have wrapped to the next row and have retained their default width of 20% each. Now let's set each of them to 50% so together they make up the full width of the section. That's better. Now let's switch to mobile. The columns have wrapped here by default and each one takes up 100% of the section's width, which works nicely here. Let's switch back to tablet and edit the page content. Make sure to click Save when prompted to save the edits we did on the footer. The layout looks good. We only need to edit the font size of this heading. Luckily, we can control the font size in each viewport. I already saved this as a global font when designing for desktop. So we'll edit it directly from the global settings. I've set the font size to VW, which represents the viewport width, and as it sounds, is relative to the percentage of the viewport's width. Let's hide the preview panel to see how the font size changes based on the screen size. Neat. And switch back to tablet. Let's make the heading a little larger. Great. And now let's check it on mobile and change it to better fit the small screen. You can also use other units, such as pixels, depending on your preference. The column with the social media icons was perfect for desktop and tablet, but it takes up a lot of space on mobile. Since we have this information repeating in the footer, we don't absolutely have to have it here. Elementor gives you the ability to hide widgets, columns, or even a whole section when the website is displayed on different devices. You can find this option in the Advanced tab under Responsive. So go ahead and set this column to Hide. Once you choose to hide an element, it will appear grayed out in its corresponding preview. But don't worry, it will be completely hidden on the published page. Let's switch back to Tablet. Let's take a look at the next section. Switching between viewport sizes can cause columns to wrap and sometimes display in an undesirable order. In Elementor, you can rearrange the column order, select the section, and in Advanced Options, under Responsive, enable Reverse Columns for Tablet. Much better. We can also hide this image, since it's not needed for this layout. 
will hide it for both tablet and mobile. Switching back to mobile, everything looks great. The following section is interactive and was created with the Flipbox widget. As you can see on tablet, it looks great. Now switch to mobile. Let's keep things simple for the user on mobile by hiding it. But if we hide the section, the text will also be hidden. So let's first make a copy of the text and set the text to show only on mobile. Right click the text, select duplicate, and drag the widget here. Go to its responsive options and select to hide on desktop and tablet, allowing it to show only on mobile. Now hide the entire section below it, and voila! With this method, you can create unique content to match your design needs and be displayed only on specific devices. Switch the viewport back to tablet and move to the next section. It looks good. Now how about on mobile? The only thing we need to change here is the alignment of the contact information. As mentioned, each widget has viewport icons for the available responsive options. Use care when making changes. If an element doesn't have a viewport icon next to it, changes will affect the element at all viewport sizes. Select each heading and text editor widget and align to the center, like so. To save time, we can copy and paste the styles between widgets of the same type. Great, everything is optimized. Let's recap what we learned today. First, we went over the responsive features in the Elementor editor, which include the viewport preview modes, the viewport icons, and the advanced responsive widget options. Then we optimized our header and responsive navigation menu. In the footer, we reviewed the column width and wrapping. In the page content, we reviewed how to make a font responsive, hide and show elements on specific devices, and reverse column order. We then used the viewport icons to edit responsive widget options. And that's it. Now you know how to optimize your website for responsive view. As you familiarize yourself with the responsive options in the editor and gain more experience, using responsive units like viewport width and percentages will become second nature to you. You'll be able to design more intuitively in desktop mode while keeping responsive layouts in mind for more consistent results. So what are you waiting for? Get into tablet mode or mobile and optimize your site today. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell.